prisoners. That is what we have been since the start of 2021, when the UK government played nanny knows best and told the British public that we had no right to non-essential travel. Tourists and illegal migrants were still able to enter the UK, but if you only had a British passport, you risked the wrath of the British police, who seemed to have their noses in everyone's business other than real criminals. The British Border Force played taxi with the hundreds of illegal migrants that crossed the English Channel every day in 2020 and 2021, welcoming the economic criminals with three and four star hotels upon arrival. When that got filled up, the families of those in the armed forces were forced out of their homes to make way for the illegals who would eventually set fire to these barracks that hardworking members of the British public once called their homes. On May 17th, the British public are told to be grateful as the all-knowing nanny government informs us that we may once again travel. However, there's a catch. The world is no longer the free place that we have become accustomed to in recent years. The British government and many similar corrupt governments around the world have introduced a traffic light system. Well, what on earth is a traffic light system, you may ask? Well, some pen pusher in the civil service must have assumed the public to be so stupid that we would only understand red, amber and green. And because we have become accustomed to sitting in our cars on overly congested streets, thanks to the ballooning population of the last several decades, traffic lights seems to be what they went with. The traffic light system will slot the three destinations into the three categories, based on which varying degrees of quarantine and testing requirements will be determined for arriving passengers. For the green category, the passengers need to take a pre-departure test and a PCR test on or before day two of their arrival in the UK. However, they will need not to quarantine on return unless they test positive for COVID-19. Passengers arriving from destinations in the amber category need to quarantine for a period of 10 days. They are also required to take a pre-departure test and a PCR test on day two and day eight. They can also opt for a test to release on day five. So if you're doing a test on day eight, why would you not just take the test on day five and be released early? It makes no sense. <sighs> anyway, all arrivals from the red category countries will be subject to restrictions that are currently in place for those countries. The fact is that will be assessed to determine the color code of a particular country will include the rate of infection, the prevalence of COVID-19 variants, and the percentage of the population that has been vaccinated. It will also consider the country's access to reliable scientific data and genomic sequencing. Hence the reason the West has put Tanzania into the red category because the Tanzanian government doesn't go along with this COVID debacle. So I guess the real question for at least the British anyway, and I apologize in advance because I know a lot of my viewers are from around the world, but as I'm in Great Britain now and I'm eager to get away, where can we travel from May the 17th? Well, the list is likely to change, but at the moment, the countries UK travelers can travel to and from on May 17th are the following. In no particular order, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Iceland, Brunei, the Faroe Islands, the Falkland Islands, Madeira, Israel, the Azores, Gibraltar, Portugal. Now more countries will be added to this list, so stay updated. Check the link in the description to this video for the government approved list, which will update apparently every three weeks from now on. Remember, Nanny knows best and Nanny will tell us where we can and cannot go. As an individual who has objected to lockdowns and all the measures put in place since the World Health Organization downgraded COVID-19 way back in March 2020, I personally believe the expense of PCR tests are there to coerce the population into adopting vaccine passports. Make the population's life harder than it need be so that they may accept the CHICOM social credit system. We must resist these measures at all costs and where possible, we must try to make the lives of authorities as difficult as possible. By going along with this, they win, they advance with their incremental steps. 
I'm not in any position to offer you any advice. I'm not a doctor and life is about making your own decisions. However, if you were to ask me, I would say, do not allow the government or your peers to guilt trip you into not traveling. You are a free human being and as long as you set forth into the world, open to the adventures that lay ahead and don't bring your problems with you, the world will usually welcome you with open arms. Travel is good for the mind, the body and the soul and by allowing these authoritarian restrictions to dictate what we can and cannot do, we are allowing the globalists to destroy the dreams that we once had. If you would like to see more of this content, click subscribe. It costs you nothing, but really it helps me out. And if you would like to donate, you can find me on Subscribestar, Ko-fi and Pledsto. Keep progressing and never surrender to tyranny and their plans for the new world order. Happy traveling and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.